Zadrizes bus daris kos daor. Nidraji valire. Nige dai neres jol mas mo enta geri ol entron. En valire awe po anagar exant. Valire o munio engos nuhis isa. Yidraji valire. The world of Game of Thrones is a complex, epic fantasy full of a myriad of peoples and cultures. Those living in this world are spread across a vast expanse separated by continents and oceans. Just like in our own world, the diverse peoples who inhabit this fantasy world have formed their own societies and established unique cultures and even languages. Invented languages are nothing new to the science fiction and fantasy genres. From popular television series like Star Trek and Lord of the Rings, to movies such as Avatar, and even in video games, it seems everywhere you look, writers and directors are incorporating fake languages into their shows. These languages have captivated audiences to the point that some people are fluent in Cleon and Navi, the languages in Star Trek and Avatar. A common misconception that many fans of the television series have is that these languages were pulled directly from the books. Fans of the original books may know that Martin has all but implied the use of these fake languages throughout his novels, instead using English, or as he calls it, the common tongue. This makes sense for the novels because no one can read a book when half of it is in a made-up language. For the television series, however, the producers felt that a Dothraki and Valyrian language was necessary as it adds to the authenticity of the show. <laughs> D.B. Weiss and David Benioff enlisted the help of David J. Peterson to create the Dothrak language. This is not an uncommon practice for writers creating these types of fantasies. In some instances, you will see the writers simply use nonsensical strings of words. In Weiss and Benioff's case, however, they enlisted outside help to create organized languages to use in Game of Thrones. Language is reflective of the values of people who speak the language. Some words will show completely different meaning in one language to another based on how often or in what context it is used. Said you're right. I don't know how to say thank you in Dothraki. There is no word for thank you in Dothraki. In this I'm scene, very... for example, Jura tells Daenerys that there is no word for thank you in Dothraki. By saying this, he also tells us more about the Dothrak culture. We have seen at the Dothraki wedding that they are a very savage culture, but to not even have a way of thanking one another is just that much further. The Dothraki do not value gratitude, and an expression of gratitude is seen as weakness. The Dothrak language shows us that they are not sympathetic people, but rather gain their power and respect through force and killing. The creation of a brand new language is not done so lightly. In order to create a functional language, different tenses must be created and used. The language also must make sense logically. For the language to make sense, similar parts of the language must come together cohesively. Real world languages and Game of Thrones languages are very similar in that manner. The languages have tons of different words, but the words come together to form sentences. The language is not based on the number of words, but rather if those words make sense when they are joined together. To quote David Peterson, If a production wished to present itself as authentic, it must also be linguistically authentic. The level of authenticity presented in the series extends to the linguistic diversity to the peoples of Westeros and Essos. Peterson himself understood the importance of creating a feeling of authenticity in the series. Creating a language is complex, but can be the deciding factor that makes the series memorable. Valar Morgulis. Valar The previous scene shows us one example of people from other areas of the Game of Thrones world coming together with a mutual tongue. 
Though these characters did not previously meet, they are aware of each other. At first, the Brotherhood looked distastefully at the priestess until she began to speak. After they had realized that they were all followers of the Lord of Light through speaking, they grew a little friendlier. But why do these languages make the series more believable? From a linguistic standpoint, language is a window into the people who speak it, how a group of people see and understand the world around them, and also gives clues to the history of its speakers. You can follow the language progression as a society expands and takes over new territory, and the natives of the area adopt the new language. Just like in our own world, the languages in Game of Thrones follow these same principles. High Valyrian was the language of the Valyrians. As the Freehold conquered more territory, the natives of those regions adopted High Valyrian. However, after the Doom, the languages transformed into Low Valyrian and then into the multiple languages spoken in the free cities around Essos. The fictional evolution of the languages in Game of Thrones is inspired by real-world events. After the fall of the Romans, Latins evolved into the numerous Romantic languages like Spanish and Italian which are still spoken today. Those Romantic languages then spread and different dialects were formed. With more people studying these newfound languages, Latin began to become unnecessary. The same happened with the Valyrian tongue and, ironically, High Valyrian became the outsider language. Our world is full of many different societies and cultures and their language reflects this. This is no different in the world of Game of Thrones. Although a fictional world, the fake languages add an element of realism that captivate and immerse viewers into the fictional world being created. Valor Megules